That explains his limp. Yeah, so let me remind you who we have on the show right now. Angelica Bridges, celebrity chef and TV host. She is as talented as I am friendless. Comedian Bob DeBono, if hilarity was a basketball court, I'd dribble all over him. Mm, nice. And Allison Rosen, Time Out New York's hot seat editor. If incisive commentary were crack cocaine, I'd do her in a bus station bathroom. Probably with Todd Bridges and perhaps Daniel Baldwin. I can't wait to be there. Yes. Ugh. Cowboy, more like cowgirl, because he cried. Dallas Cowboy receiver Terrell Owens. Terrell Owens broke into tears following Sunday's Cowboys-Giants game. Not because they lost, mind you, but because he thought quarterback Tony Romo was unfairly criticized for taking a midweek trip to Mexico with girlfriend Jessica Simpson. She's a songstress. Let's take a look at the weep play, if you will. You, you can talk about the vacation, and if you do that, it's really unfair. It's really unfair. It's my team. It's my quarterback. And if you guys do that, man, it's unfair. We lost as a team. We lost as a team, man. Ugh, crying is weird. I think Ugh. I just dropped an egg watching it. <laughs> what a mess. Bob, I go to you first. I can't help but think that this is Hillary Clinton's fault. First of all, <laughs> Bill Clinton is going to be fuming. Oh, he's going to be like, listen, T.O., that is Hillary's thing. She's supposed to cry, not you. You and I are going to have a problem over that, I tell you. i got to congratulate that was Bob. That amazing yeah. 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 Thank you. Thank you very much. There you go. I tell you. He's doing... He's doing Bill Clinton, right? No, Ever that, was since well, that was a bomb. No, that was a bomb. Okay. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Bill, that crying, I mean, I'm not an expert. I'm not a body language expert. But that looked kind of fake to me. Oh, it was completely fake. Like, I think T.O. wanted press and he got that. But he also wanted sympathy. And it was an odd way to go about it. But I think the question that America wants to know is, when did he morph into Isaac Hayes? Because <laughs> if you look at that, with the beard and the glasses, it is scary. He's going to be spewing Scientology dogma right after that speech. <laughs> I'll tell you what. Uncanny. Mm. Ever since he cried yesterday, I looked at today, I looked in the paper, and his, he's winning New Hampshire now. <laughs> <laughs> so it does work. Allison, let me go to you. Have we come to a point where crying is not only accepted in pro sports, it's actually considered a plus, if you will? My teammates and I and the various pro sports teams that I am a part of, and there's many, yes. I, do, I do spring training all yeah. over the place. Um, that's a sports thing, right? Yes. Um, yes, we do think that at this point it's good to cry to show that you're human. But, you know, I really have to say I do think there is a double standard because Hillary, you know, cried and you can't even see her tears in that video. Yeah. I can't, at least. Exactly. I, I think that was overblown. And then here's this thing and uh, no one's, you know, have, well, I mean, we're talking about it, but I don't think it's ha having that much of a negative effect on him. Oh, it is. It is. Is it? You're sexist. Are Angelica, <laughs> do women find men who cry, like big, dumb athletes crying, like little girls? Do they super, find that attractive? Super sexy. Really? Super sexy. That, that's how you win me. Absolutely. Because, you know, you're, these guys are on the field. They've got so much testosterone. They're, they're kicking people's ass right and left. And if they can, you know, leave that on the field or on the ice and they go home and show a sensitive side, at least you know. So they're working with the right side of the brain and the left uh, side of the brain. They're a little balanced. I'm it's all so good. I don't have any testosterone, but I <laughs> fall like a baby all the time. Still good? Uh, uh, no, no. you got to have a little balance there. you got to have a little balance. But she did touch you. She did touch me. I saw her touch you. Yeah. i got to move on. I want to okay. touch on this because we've got a few minutes. Can money buy happiness? Yes, but only if you're willing to spend most of it on crap. A new study. Mm -hmm. It suggests that the higher the price tag, the more you will like a product, even if the product sucks. They found this out by giving people wine to drink in a study and telling them that they were tasting five different wines sold at different prices. In reality, they were drinking the same wines. Those crazy researchers, they're pranking. And, and so, but predictably, the more expensive the wine, the, they, the more that they thought it was expensive, the more they liked it. So that suggests that we like well, things. That made it clear. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now that you interrupted me, it makes no sense. <laughs> the more money we pay for something, the more we think it's good. That was the uh, take home of that long study. Allison, isn't this basically why women spend so much money on outlandish purses and shoes when a paper bag and moccasins will do? Well, I appreciate your concern for the sisterhood. But yes, this is true, actually, because I used to, you know, sell myself as a cheap whore. And then one day I'm like, what am I doing? I had to sell myself as an 
expensive whore because then people are going to be more happy with the product. Yes, that's, did that work yeah, out for you? Pretty happy. much, yeah. Nice. Mm. Well, that was before I, my, before I changed my price structure. You're out of the price league. <laughs> Ange Angelica, yes. what drives me crazy, what's worse than this, are the so-called sales, mm -hmm. where women are made to believe that they are saving money, oh, but yeah. still spending ridiculous sums of cash on crap. Should we imprison all women? No, absolutely not. You know, I get a high from when I get a good deal. That's where I get my high. Really? Oh, yeah. Mm. Don't you, you buy, when you get a, when you get a good deal? deal on Coke? Yeah. Oh, 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 what was that? The, uh, the, uh, this cram's free. Oh, You're hot. Right. Excellent. It's not so much the drug that it. gets me high. It's the deal I make when yes. I buy the drug that makes me It turns me on. <laughs> Bob, do you, uh, do you need to spend lots of cash on something well, to make yourself feel good about your purchase? I, I agree with that whole theory. I subscribe to it. Because my dad, when I was a kid, he's got like severe cheapness with OCD. And he would buy us irregular pants at Marshall's. Oh. Uh, and I, I was depressed. There'd be no zipper. Like, I was so <laughs> depressed all year at school. I'd be made fun of. Mm. All the pants I'd get would always come with a hole in the back. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I don't understand it. Your I don't know where my Sal parents... probably mm. love that. <laughs> yeah, it was, uh, my parents never told me where. All right, we've got him. Time to go back to Andy Levy for the post-game wrap-up. What have you got there, Andy? Ah, uh, stuffy nose, cough, my whole body hurts, Greg. Uh, it's casual, Andy. Other than that, I am fantastic. Mm. Uh, Allison, it's time to play a little game I like to call Four Truths and a Lie. I love that game. Which of the following statements isn't true? Okay. A, in 2005, Bill ran the Walt Disney World Marathon dressed as four different Disney princesses and Minnie Mouse, changing costumes along the way. Do you want me to hear all of them yes. before I say it? Okay. B, Bill touched the tongue of a beluga whale at a Chicago aquarium, and a day later, the great beast was dead. <laughs> C. Bill was once run over by a woman in a Jeep Cherokee who thought he was a raccoon. D. In 2004, Bill's father was briefly a suspect in a series of gruesome murders of Chicago prostitutes. And E. In 2002, Bill pinched Sir Ian McKellen's ass at a Saturday Night Live after party. D. Is not true. You are correct. Mm. Although I he, know his dad. Well, that said, he <laughs> was a, not that kind of guy. He was a person of interest. Yes, yeah, and he was not. To be he was day. not a suspect. Right. He was He's a person, person of interest. Oh, that's only yes. a trick question, which is not how one plays this game. And okay, we're done with this, Allison. I got to okay, move on. Fine. Right. Love you, uh, Bob. What did you do to get your website suspended? Oh, I, oh, I, I was sending a porn to. Uh, to uh, some Asian girl I met online. Oh, cool. All right. Hey, what did a classmate name? Know. What did a classmate named Pete Burns do to you in junior high? Oh, he, I, I, he beat me up on the bus in, in front of everybody. That's it. All right. And then the next day, my dad was like, "Go in, you know, stand up for yourself. He won't do it again. Just he's a bully." And then he beat me up again the next day. All right. Oh. And why did you do 18 hours of community service in college? Oh, uh, for throwing plates out my window, <laughs> and at Quinnipiac College. Just felt like throwing plates out your window? We, uh, we didn't have a garbage can. Oh, that's good enough. All right, man, I'm done. Thank you, Andy. Okay. Andy will be on the live desk later today at 1 p.m. Eastern. And you can see me at 2 p.m. Eastern on America's Pulse with Edie Hill. My thanks to Bob DeBono for coming on the show tonight. Wonderful job. Please come back. Plus, special thanks to the lovely, delightful, and wonderful Angelica Bridges. She was wonderful. Bill Schultz, pathetic. And the great Allison Rosen, always a pleasure. It does it for me. I'm Greg Gutfeld. I'll see you next time.